What is biblical eldership? This is going to be a short summary message to explain what biblical eldership is and why is it important. I've taken this subject and broken it into five very simple points so it's easy to remember. Number one, biblical eldership is eldership by the book. Number two, it is pastoral eldership. Number three, it is biblically qualified eldership. Four, it is spirit-appointed eldership. And number five, it is pastoral oversight of the church by a plurality of qualified elders. This will help us to grasp this more easily. Let's go back now to point number one. Biblical eldership is eldership by the book. The reason we call it biblical eldership is that we believe it represents accurately and fairly what the Bible teaches about eldership. This is our job to interpret the scripture fairly. Second, biblical eldership is pastoral eldership. This is may maybe the most important point. When we turn to our New Testament, this is made very clear by both the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. But first, I'd like you to look at this in your own Bibles. So would you turn with me to Acts chapter 20, verse 28? A very clear, direct statement by the Apostle Paul. Speaking to the Ephesian elders, he says this, Be on guard for yourselves and all the flock among which the Holy Spirit made you overseers. Now here's the purpose to shepherd the church of God, or to pastor the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. And then if we turn over to the words of the Apostle Peter, chapter 5, 1 Peter, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I exhort the elders among you, shepherd, pastor, the flock of God among you, exercising oversight. So here are two clear statements by the two giant apostles. To no other group, to no other person, is the command given, shepherd the church of God. He uses the imagery, both men, of the sheep and the shepherds. It's one of the beautiful biblical images to explain leadership. But it also tells us the role of the elders. Shepherding has five aspects to it. The first aspect is teaching. And this may be the most emphasized of the different aspects to shepherding. Notice in the qualifications for an elder, if you will take in your Bibles and turn to Titus chapter 1, listing the qualifications, the most important ending with this statement. The candidate for eldership must hold fast the faithful word, which is in accordance with the teaching, the apostolic orthodox teaching. Two purposes so that he will be able both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. In other words, a biblical elder must know the Bible. He must be able to communicate it and teach it to others, recognize false teachers, and to stop them. And then if you'll turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 3, also listing the biblical qualifications. In chapter 3, verse 2, he says of the candidate able to teach. But most important is 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. There Paul says this, The elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor. But now listen to this very carefully. Especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Some elders, not all, labor, and that's a very strong word, in preaching and in teaching. So, as we see, one of the major aspects, maybe the first and foremost aspect of eldership, is the teaching, feeding ministry of the church. And all elders must know their Bibles, they must be able to communicate the Bible, they must be able to recognize false teaching. So, this is a very important aspect. A second aspect is the protecting aspect. And so Paul says to the Ephesian elders, wolves are coming, guard the flock. And so this is, again, something the elders have to be able to do. They guard and protect the flock from the arch enemy of the church, which is the false teacher. And then the leading ministry. The shepherd has to lead the sheep out of the fold. He has to lead the sheep back into the fold. He leads the sheep to higher ground, to water. Well, the same thing's true in the church. The elders are a leadership body, and they lead the church. They, they move the church forward. They, they set vision and direction for the church. But it also includes the whole management of land and water and health of the sheep. The same thing is true of the elders. And then finally, there is the healing ministry. This deals with the many, many practical aspects of caring for people or 
If it was a literal shepherd caring for sheep, this would mean marrying people, burying people, counseling people, seeing people through their problems and their many troubles, dealing with the sick. In fact, James makes this very clear, James 5, 14 and 15. Is anyone sick among you? Then he must call for the elders of the church. They are to pray over him. Then we have number three, biblical eldership is biblically qualified eldership. Now, this is the emphasis of much of the New Testament. Qualifications. This is found in 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7, Titus chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, and 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Elders are to meet God-given qualifications. They are to be morally and spiritually qualified. They must have a good reputation with those inside and outside the church. They must be examples to the flock, and they must know the Bible and be able to teach the Bible. A biblical eldership is an eldership that meets the God-given biblical qualifications. Point number four, biblical eldership is spirit-appointed eldership. Let's look at this again. Go back to Acts chapter 20, and we want to look at verse 28, one of the great verses on eldership. In fact, the entire passage is such an important passage, and I highly recommend elders memorize this entire section from verse 17 all the way over to 38. Paul says to the Ephesian elders, be on guard for yourselves and all the flock among which the Holy Spirit made you or appointed you or placed you as overseers for the purpose of shepherding the flock. So I want you to notice there's a human aspect and a divine aspect. The divine aspect tells us the Holy Spirit made you overseers. The only elders we want are those the Spirit of God is motivated, called, and gifted to do this work. Point number five, biblical eldership is pastoral oversight of the church by a plurality of qualified elders. Now, this can be very easily misunderstood. There is within the eldership both diversity and equality. This is perfectly illustrated for us with the 12 apostles. Our Lord called 12 apostles. He did not call one man or appoint one man. Now, all 12 apostles are equally apostles and sent out to preach. But within the apostolic council, Peter is without any question the natural leader. He is the mouthpiece of the group. In fact, within the 12, three stand out, and that's Peter, James, and John. Now, the same thing is true of an eldership. All elders are equally called to the Holy Spirit. All equally have authority, equality in their decision-making. But there is diversity within the eldership. There's different gifts different callings, different experience, different amount of time and interest that each elder contributes to the whole. Now, this is clearly brought out in 1 Timothy chapter 5. Again, one of these key verses to understand eldership. 1 Timothy 5, 17. The elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox while he's threshing, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. All elders rule, some rule well, some labor at preaching and teaching. So within the elder council, there is difference of gift and calling, and there's difference of interest and years of experience. So you have both equality and you have diversity. Now, using biblical terminology, the elders have been called to oversee the church, pastor the church, lead the church, care for the church. I've just summarized for you what biblical eldership is. Now I want to look at why is it important. Number one, God's word teaches pastoral eldership. This is a scriptural doctrine. The Bible says so, and that should be good enough for us. Many of our problems in our churches are because we are disobedient to the teaching of scripture, and we substitute human tradition for the teaching of scripture. Number two, biblical eldership promotes the true nature of the New Testament church. Now, in any organization, the nature of the leadership should match and promote the nature of the organization. The church is not a corporation. It's not a government or a military. The church is the family of God. And I believe that eldership promotes the family nature of the church and it promotes the mission of the church. The church is made up of spirit and dwelt believers who are saints to God, gifted of God. It is a wonderful worldwide family. Eldership agrees with this and promotes this. 
Third, and this is a very important point for uh, church leaders, biblical eldership provides the leaders of the church with genuine accountability. When we examine our own beliefs in sin and Satan and human depravity, we of all groups should be most interested in having real accountability for our leaders. In fact, the more we believe in the seriousness of sin and the deceitfulness of the human heart, we will insist that our leaders have a genuine accountability among themselves. Now, I believe biblical eldership provides for us a formal structure in which leaders are accountable to one another. Also, all of us by nature are lazy, we procrastinate, we don't follow through with our responsibilities. In a shared leadership structure, we encourage one another and push one another on to do what we are to do. Fourth, biblical eldership provides true peer relationships. If you have colleagues and if you share the ministry with other people, this will balance you. It will comfort you. It will encourage you. You see, elders are shepherds to one another. They hold one another accountable, they protect one another, and they teach one another. I would have to say to you that my fellow elders have been used as a tool of God for my own sanctification, character building, my own leadership skills. And lastly, biblical eldership provides more balanced pastoral care for the church. Every elder will contribute his own wisdom, his own gifts, his own interests, his own perspective. And so you have a more balanced leadership body. Biblical eldership honors the word of God. It strengthens our leaders through real accountability and it protects our churches. May we all be able by the power of the Holy Spirit to understand this great topic of the word of God. <music>